Well, man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you made it to Chicago okay and super happy uh, to be having this conversation with you today um, about creative intent, right? And so you've had uh, an amazing career. You've had a lot of uh, ebbs and flows and tried a couple of different things. Um, and so today we really just want to kind of unlock um, you know, what you've been working towards, what's been the role to get to where you are today and, uh, and what their future looks like. Uh, and so as I jump into uh, my first question, it would be, um, do you remember having a desire to turn art into a career or become an entrepreneur um, even at a young age? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a city called Rialto, California. It's about an hour and a half of LA. Um, and there wasn't a lot going on. It's not like I would I, like people that lived in LA were surrounded by, you know, culture and, mm -hmm. and just being in LA in general, being outside of LA, you had to get a little more crafty. And, you know, it's like, we, I grew up in like an, a lower income area. So it was like a lot of graffiti. There's a lot of bunch of people on drugs all over the city, you know, walking around. And so I think from an early age, I was like one, I like need to get out of here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And two was like, well, how, right? Cause like, at the, you know, my parents, my parents are immigrants that came from Guatemala. And so obviously they were working really hard to, you know, put food on the table, et cetera. And, you know, like my mom ended up becoming a nurse and my dad was a truck driver and I wasn't interested in either of those things. And so I was interested in, you know, what was surrounding me at the time at an early age, which was graffiti and skateboarding. And so, you know, like for me at an early age was like, you know, I was buying and stealing tech decks, taking them apart. And then I would go to school and I was, I was basically like a mini skate shop of tech decks. And so I'd like, I'd like have the decks separated from the nuts, the little tiny nuts and bolts to the wheels of the trucks. And I was like slanging tech deck parts, you know? And so... I think that was my first business, I guess. And I was like, you know, fourth grade. Um, and then from there, I was like, wait a minute. Like, I made some money off of, you know, I love, at the time, I was addicted to tech decks, you know? And so I think yeah. that, was, that was kind of the start of like, well, you know, what else do I like? And how can I incorporate that into potentially like generating dollars? Yeah. So at a very young age, you'd already started to understand that concept of yeah. kind of art and entrepreneurship and how you can marry the two. Uh, it's pretty interesting that it was around the decks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, fast forward a little bit. Uh, right. You um, you left an agency that you started in 2017. And it sounds like that was a really pivotal point in your career. Um, what was your relationship with creativity at that point in your life? It was a very love hate relationship. You know, I think at that point, you know, 2017, I was 28 years old. You know, I had been in streetwear, you know, and mm -hmm. like surrounded by culture for, you know, 10 to 12 years by, you know, driving the van for the hundreds you know, yeah. being the marketing guy for uh, SSUR, you know, mm -hmm. being the tech pack production guy for the seventh letter, et cetera, et cetera. And I was in a position that I wasn't happy with, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, I had two kids, I had a wife and I just, I wasn't generating the amount of energy that I felt I needed to be generating at that point, right? right? You know, like yeah. when you're in high school, you think about when I'm 30, like I'm gonna have the house and the car and the oh, wife yeah. and the kids, et cetera, Everything you know? Is clean, yeah. And I had the wife and the kids and I didn't have the car and I didn't have the house and I didn't have a lot of other things, you know? And I was like, mm -hmm. I need to figure some shit out. And so, you know, the, the agency, was taking a step outside of my comfort zone because you know i was working for people the whole time you mm -hmm. know salary benefits etc and this was kind of one of the first times where i was like okay i'm going to try to offer myself as a service to yeah. you know the world basically and you know very very quickly i realized that the amount of work that goes into mm -hmm. you know being able to generate dollars in general you know as a business providing services that to be honest a lot of other people can offer 
yep. you know, um, that's what kind of, you know, it was a kick in the ass, you know, the best way to say it was just like, I'm not enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Like I I'm okay at it, you know? And like some months we'd make 500 bucks, some months we make 10 grand, you know? And it's like that inconsistency, um, with the high level of workload, mm -hmm. it just, it just didn't sit right with me. And I think that's when, you know, at the time I looked at my partner who I started the agency with and I was like, if you want to keep doing this, go ahead. This is not yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know? And it's an and interesting thing to kind of realize at that point, right? Because as you describe where you were in life to, to also make that decision, it's kind of like, okay, now what? Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was one of those moments, you know, which uh, I'm sure a lot of people are either in right now or it will happen. It's like, okay, I either give up mm. or I got to figure something else out, you mm -hmm. know? But at the, at that moment, I was like, you've already tried everything under the sun, like talking to myself, obviously, you know? And it was like, do you just give up and go get a job that, you know, is going to provide for your family, you know, put food on the table and you're just, that's it, you know? And it was kind of mm -hmm. like this moment in time where I was like, literally 50 50 of just giving up being a creative in general you know yeah. and just literally clocking in and like that was going to be it you know and fortunately i went the other way you went the other way and so it, in kind of what you're describing there's kind of like this 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 balance that that you're doing and you're trying to sustain this career as a creative and also maintain your independence uh how did you how did you feel like you start to balance the two of those I did it, you know, it was, <laughs> it was more, more, how can I put this? Like I was putting so much energy into something and I wasn't really receiving the return, you know, to just financially, to be honest, you know, like <laughs> at, at the end of the day, we got, we gotta, we gotta eat, you know, we gotta, right. we gotta sleep right. on a bed, you know? And, um, you know, at, at first walking away from the agency and basically just focusing on art in general is again, you know, it's, it's, there's a reason why a lot of people don't like succeed in the art world because it's fucking really hard to put everything that you have into something, turn around and then one, put a price on it. Yeah. And then two, have somebody pay for that, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, it was, it was a lot of just, Fortunately, man, I've met so many good people in my life that have kind of helped me with all types of things, whether they were mentors or just friends, you know, and I think throughout that, that beginning of this voyage that I'm in now was a lot of calling my friends and mentors that I hadn't really done before, you know, and just reaching out and be like, what do you think about this? You know, like, usually I just, I would just do my own shit and be like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I think that you know, reaching out to these people, one, they were like, Oh, shit, Josh actually like wants to talk about like mm -hmm. me helping him potentially, mm -hmm. opposed to just having a conversation. And I think a lot of people respected that, you know, and again, that was something that I, I hadn't really done. And so it was like, it was this like year of just completely forgetting about my comfort zone, mm -hmm. and doing the complete opposite of everything that I had done before, you know, and I think, um, that's when everything really started pivoting and aligning to obviously put me in the position that I'm in today. Right. And it sounds like you reached, uh, you know, a place of at least maturity in your approach to how you want to work with people and, and come into a place where you're like, it's not, it's, it's not like I'm just asking for help. It's like I'm asking a partner and figure out how to make this thing a reality. Right. And yeah. so I think, you know, today, as, as you look at your career and um, as art continues to evolve, uh, what does success look like for you now? I think that changes every day, you know, mm -hmm. like, I think, I think at an early age, success to me was just paying rent and mm -hmm. surviving, mm -hmm. you know, and that concept still exists. Like, I just need to make sure my kids can make it and that my wife is okay to me that's still success now the idea of 
you know, my positioning in the category of art is always evolving on a daily basis, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily success. That's more so like how I want to feel about myself and what I'm generating. Yeah, but correct. success, success to me is just surviving, you know, whether that's, you know, in this city or this country and whether it's this much food or this much, you know, it's like, it's just surviving really is success to me, you know, like, um, but you know, that, that idea changes on a daily basis about what, who I am and where I want to be, you know, yeah. it's, conti it's, I'm continuously trying to evolve and push the envelope and grow as a creative, you know? And so mm -hmm. it's kind of like this endless journey where like, I don't even know if I'll ever reach what I feel like I think is the end, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. Because you're, you've essentially said that it's not necessarily about like a monetary thing. It's more so about you as a creative and, and your personal growth. Right. And we've, we've been lucky enough to, to witness that and see that. And when I think about uh, your visual aesthetic, right, it's, it's incredibly popular and super re recognizable. Um, where did you first find that inspiration? Like where did that come from and, and how do you continue to feed your designs? I mean, like that, that's like asking a professional athlete, like, when did this all start? It honestly, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's in my blood. It's in their blood. Right. It, this was all meant to happen. Mm -hmm. And so if I had an answer for you, it'd be millions of answers right it was the the first time I went to a museum and I saw a Roy Lichtenstein painting and I was like that's cool you know mm -hmm. and then like going to another room and being like I don't like this stuff right mm -hmm. so it was like already acknowledging that you know I like these this like bold imagery the colors mm -hmm. obviously the the cartoon vibe to it you know and then I, I, also it's like I was into skateboarding and like I would I remember like drawing the zoo york and like the uh flame boy and wet willy graphics like over yeah. and over and over right and it was like yeah. this this was just something that was happening like I was just like I wasn't getting paid to do it I was in school I should have been you know yeah doing whatever but I was just drawing these these images that I was that I liked you know like <laughs> Zoo York didn't mean anything to me but I was like and I, I didn't even like I don't even think I had a Zoo York deck but the, <laughs> the, the graffiti verbiage itself yeah. and that that look I was like that's dope and I drew it so many times where I could do it with my eyes closed you know yeah. and then from there it was like you know obviously like growing and growing and like just learning more about the world and finding out about you know Keith Haring and like that whole you know bubble of, of art in, in the 80s and 90s and like you know I think everyone kind of knows that type of moment in time mm -hmm. but I didn't you know that's when I was like I like this mm. you know I wasn't I wasn't telling myself like you're going to be an artist for the rest of your life but I was like I enjoy this you know, and it's like, I enjoy drawing. And then, you know, obviously getting to the the moment that, you know, the concept of reality idea was born. It was like, I can say that, you know, I was watching a show and I was like, oh, wait. And then I went and drew on the shoe. Right. But that answer is too easy. You know, there was <laughs> so many other things that happened in my life <laughs> that, you know, kind of in, like secretly inspired me, you know, to get to that moment to right. draw on that shoe. And then from there, it was like, it's been a wrap since, you know? It's been a wrap. I love the way you, you put it because it's not, it's never gonna be one moment. It's gonna be a series of moments that lead to inspiration that take you to the place you are now. And then it'll be another series that take you to the next place. Um, my last question before we open it up to our amazing uh, Converse All-Star community members, uh, for the young creatives in the Converse All-Stars community, uh, what's your advice for them as they work to fuel their creativity with purpose? I mean, I think it's um, do everything that you fucking can, like, and fail. Mm. It's like, I, I've failed so many times like more than I've won and mm. you don't see that on Instagram right you don't see like I'm not talking about it on Twitter like oh I you know I suck I today, today. <laughs> but you know again it's like I went from you know if I break down my 
career decisions. You know, my first job was a barista at Starbucks and then I was a salesman at Zoomies and then I dropped that and I was like, I'm going to go be a firefighter. And then I graduated from the fire academy and I was a reserve firefighter for Riverside County, like full time, like life was done at like 1920, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, like I was like, this is it, you know, I was, was going to be a firefighter. I was going to have the white picket fence and et cetera. I did that for six to eight months and I was like, I don't like this. And then mm -hmm. I stopped and then I went back to work at Zoomies. And then like, you know, I went to jail for a little bit, unfortunately, which is, was a huge fucking, you know, speed bump in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Bouncing back from that, you know, I ended up making windows for my uncle, like in a factory in fucking Fontana. And wow. then that's when, you know, the van driving position for the hundreds happened. And then mm -hmm. I went to go do graphics for the seventh letter. And then I went to go work for SSUR. And then I went back to the hundreds. And all the, the like, in the meanwhile, I was growing my, my name and my own streetwear brand, right? Yeah. yeah. None of that would have made it like I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't do all that shit right mm -hmm. and you know like I, whether it was getting fired from those jobs or getting paid almost nothing you know it's like I just wanted to keep going and keep learning you know like people were like oh I was like taking jobs as like a salesman never been a salesman before and I was like I was like learning as I went you know and like did I drop the ball a million times for sure you know yeah. But, you know, like, again, it's like, I was just willing to do everything under the sun, you know, to hopefully get to a place that I was going to be happy with, you know, and that took 15 years, right? You know, 15 years of taking this job doing that. Oh, that didn't work out. This is kind of okay. I kind of like that. No, I hate doing this, you know, like, meeting this person, traveling, doing all these things to finally like, you know, get to a point at where I'm at today where I'm like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could have been a firefighter at 20 years old. Exactly. And even though I hated it, like it was a stable job, yeah. you know, and if I would have done that, I'd be not talking to you right now. That's true. That's true. I think one of the key things that at least coming across for me in a, a lot of your experiences is that you, you're not afraid to try things, right? And, and, and in addition to trying things, you don't know what's going to connect to the next thing. And so yeah. it's great to, to put yourself maybe in uncomfortable situations where, where you do try those things. Yeah. Um, so our, our next question, I want to bring in Kwame. He's based in, in London. Um, Kwame, let me, uh, let's get you to turn on your camera so we can uh, yeah. get this conversation. There you go. <laughs> hey, Josh. What up? I'm a big fan of your work, man. Thanks, man. That's good. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, I'm an illustrator based in um, London, and I just wanted to ask um, a question about your work. Um, like, a huge, like, characteristic about your work is, like, the bold lines, and it's very comical. I just wanted to know, um, has that always been, like, a big part of how you worked, or did you work differently before? I mean, if I think about, you know, my career as uh, an illustrator, a graphic designer, you know, a graffiti artist, um, there were, you know, my, my style and take was always comical, you know, it was never serious. Like, I was never into, an easy way to put it is a straight line opposed to a thick, bold, inconsistent line. You know, um, yeah. and, you know, growing up, I was watching, I'm sure you were too, watching cartoons every day, like yeah. that shit. And <laughs> like, I can't tell you how many times I've drawn Bugs Bunny and Homer and, you know, SpongeBob, like millions of times. And like, if yeah. you go back and you reference these cartoons, like they all have a nice thick black stroke around whatever color is going on, whether it's in the background or it's the main character. And so anytime, whether it was me painting a wall or designing a graphic t-shirt that had some kind of, you know, multiple color component to it, there was always a black stroke around everything that I did. I never did a red stroke or a blue stroke or purple or whatever. It wasn't my thing. Maybe there was color inside of that, but to me it was uh, kind of like 
incorporating that, you know, that illustration vibe that, you know, I technically grew up on. Okay. Amazing. Sounds good. Coming. Thanks so much for your question. Uh, next up, we're going to bring in OFEC in Tel Aviv. Um, hey, Josh. What up? What up? It's good. Uh, first of all, it's uh, my honor to talk about to talk with you. And uh, my question is: uh, In addition to talent, what else uh, you what uh, what else do you think help you achieve uh, success? Man. It's, uh, it's deep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I think it's um, this, this mentality of uh, hoping for the best and expecting the worst with everything uh, has allowed me to, um, you know, learn from my mistakes, learn from my failures, and continue the energy that I have into the next thing. And so like, you know, ta yes, talent is one thing. Can I draw? For sure. You know, are there, are there people out there that can draw better than me? A million people that can draw better than me. But the drive and determination that's inside of me pushes me to do the things that I do, right? You know, whether it's hand painting an entire room, blowing my savings and hoping that people were gonna come is the reason I'm, I'm here today, you know? And I think the fact that that's, you know, whether it's in my bloodstream or my bones, whatever, it's that to me is more important than the talent right now. Okay, cool. Opic, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, man. So Josh, our, our, our last question coming from the community is coming from Pedro from Brazil. And his question is, I'm an artist from Brazil and sometimes my art talks about the representation of my neighborhood and our culture, such as clothes and hairstyles, et cetera. I know that you have Latin family. What are the elements or objects that you drew or want to draw that recalls the culture of your family? I mean, I think, you know, at the end of the day, I'm first generation Guatemalan. So my mom and my dad were born in Guatemala and their parents and their parents. So realistically, my bloodstream is Mayan, it's Mayan culture. And if you think about what the Mayans created or even have created today is like some of the most historic shit in the world, right? They built pyramids and cities in the middle of a jungle, you know? without tools and who knows what, you know, the Mayan calendar and, you know, like they've accomplished so many things, you know, and I think that drive, you know, and determination, it's literally in my bloodstream. And I, you know, I don't necessarily focus on, you know, um, the imagery of, you know, what my ancestors have created or you know what the Guatemalan culture has created more so it just runs through me on a daily basis you know it's like do I appreciate it for sure you know am I thankful and grateful for being who I am today because of my ancestors one million percent but you know it's like I don't feel the need right now or today to like go draw a Mayan calendar only because it's it's you know something that my ancestors created I think it's more so like allowing, you know, um, the hard work and the crazy things that have been, you know, um, developed and, and just produced by my ancestors to kind of just flow through me organically um, and, you know, continuing to do so for generations and generations uh, after me. But yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Well, Josh, thank you so much for, for sharing with us uh, a little bit more about your process, about your career, um, some of the things that influenced you and where you've been and where you're headed um, all around this idea of creative intent. And then also thank you to the All-Stars for your amazing questions. Really appreciate it today. Yeah, thank you guys.